In this video clip, we will discuss the dissolution of parliament and elections. First of all, we will see the provisions of the constitution in relation to the dissolution of parliament. Parliament may be dissolved by the president after four years and six months from, the, from its first meeting. Or otherwise, parliament dissolved or parliament shall stand dissolved after five years by operation of law. Now when you see the article 70 paragraph 5 subparagraph A, a proclamation dissolving the parliament shall fix a date or dates for the election of members of parliament and summon new parliament to meet on a date not later than three months after the date of such proclamation. The first thing, the proclamation must say the parliament is dissolved. And second thing, there must be a date, more than one date to conduct the elections of members of parliament. The third matter we must hear, we must see here, the proclamation shall summon the new parliament to meet on a date not later than three months from the date of such proclamation. Not only this section, the proclamation is made under Parliamentary Elections Act, section 10.1. Section 10 1 of the Parliamentary Elections Act provides that the President shall, in every proclamation dissolving the Parliament or fixing a date or dates for election of members of Parliament, shall specify the first thing is nomination period and the date on which the poll shall be taken. Then the proclamation is made by the President in accordance with the provisions of the constitution, that is Article 75A and the Parliamentary Elections Act Section 10.1. And thereafter, the election commissions, National Election Commission comes to play the role because the president must make a proclamation, that's the end of the executive work. Then the election must be conducted by National Election Commission. Then in terms of section 24, the note is published by Election Commission. Now here when you see the section here, the Election Commissioner that is the National Election Commission, shall publish a notice in a gazette specifying four matters. The first one, electoral district in which the election is contested. And second one, the names of the candidates. Third one, date of poll. Date of poll in the sense, the date already specified in the proclamation. That is the date here we must specify. Then finally, polling station. Now under this set, under this section 24.1, the Commission, election, National Election Commission published two matters. Electoral district in which the election is contested and the date of poll. Other two matters may be published later. And thereafter, the pathetic situation or the critical situation arose. That is, the spread of COVID-19 disease. Section 24.3 provides that where due to any emergency or unforeseen situations, 
the poll for election in an electoral district cannot be taken on the day specified in the notice. That is the date specified in the proclamation also. The commissioner may by, by order published in the Gazette appoint another day for taking of such poll. Then, actually what happened here, commission, the National Election Commission published an order under section 24.3 to inform the public that the poll as scheduled earlier cannot be taken. Sometimes one may argue that the order under section 24.3 was not in accordance with the provisions of section 24.3 because under section 24.3 the commission must specify the date to conduct the election. But even though it is published in an order, in reality it is a notice issued to the public for information. After that, National Election Commission is not prevented to issue any notice to the pub general public for information that we must consider, we must take into our mind. Then again, the Commission discuss everything and finalized and informed the public by an order. It was a real order made under section 24, subsection 3 of the Parliamentary Elections Act. By Gazette notification number 2172-3 of April 30th, 2020, the order published under section 24.3 and specify the date as polling date, that is June 20th, 2020. Now we will see the constitutional provisions in relation to the Proclamation dissolved in the parliament. As we have seen earlier, the proclamation dissolved in the parliament shall fix a date or dates for the election of members of the parliament and summon a new parliament to meet on a date not later than three months after date of such proclamation. That's fine, that we have seen already. The date fixed for the first meeting of the parliament by proclamation under paragraph A or B may be varied by subsequent proclamation provided that the date so fixed by subsequent proclamation shall be a date not later than three months after the date of original proclamation. Now here very strictly law provides that once the parliament dissolved, the new parliament must meet in any circumstances within three months time. Even the president can't postpone the election or postpone the meetings of new parliament after three months time. Now we will see the situation. First of all, the order made and published on March 21st, 2020 specify that the election commission will appoint a day coming after 14, day of 14 days from 30th, of 30th day of April 2020 as the day for taking of poll for election. That's fine. Then the new date, new date for taking poll may be only after May 15. But in terms of proclamation, the new parliament should meet on May 14, 2020. 
In terms of paragraphs A and C of Article 70, paragraph 5, the proclamation shall summon the proclamation shall summon the new parliament only a date not later than three months after the date of such proclamation. The subsequent order made by the National Election Commission specifies that date of poll would be June 20th, 2020. In this scenario, there are so many arguments, but I highlighted only five arguments here. The first one is the order made by National Election Commission is ultra-virus. Second one, the order made by National Election Commission is contrary to the proclamation made by the President, which is still valid and in force. And third one, the order made by National Election Commission is in violation of provisions of the Constitution because the Constitution very clearly provides that the new parliament should meet within three months time, not later than three months time. That's correct. We will see the argument and we will respond for this, uh, respond this argument later. And we will go to the fourth one. Since the proclamation is in force, the new parliament shall be summoned or no before June 2nd, 2020, because three months. Parliament dissolved March 2nd, therefore, here the proclamation that's in force, therefore, new parliament shall be summoned or no before June 2nd. If failing, the parliament which has been dissolved will be revived. That also one of the argument now. One of the arguments now. Now finally, since the allocation of provisions was made by the parliament till 30th 2020, government has no power to spend money after April 30th 2020. Now we will see how to answer these issues. In responding to the aforesaid arguments, first we will take all first, second, three together. It is not an ordinary situation. It may be all right in ordinary situation. But now it is not an ordinary situation prevailing in the country. First of all, by virtue of the powers vested to the president, he dissolved the parliament. When the National Election Commission proceeded to conduct the free and fair election, an exceptional circumstance arose. That is a threat to the public health. We must look into the law and we must give effect to the provisions law of law. There is no second argument. But still, we must see some other uh, philosopher, given William Godwin said that, law is made for the man and not man for the law. Wherever we can, we can be sure that most valuable interest of a nation require that we should decide one way that way we ought to decide. Then always we must comply with the law, but certain circumstances, exceptional circumstances, we must decide such a way. Elections and the public health are important in a society. There is no second word at all. However, in a comparison between election and public health, the foremost attention must be given to the public health rather than elections. Now, the new parliament must meet within three months. The final date is June 2nd. But 
even though it is a violation of legal principle, legal provisions, that is not a violation of substantial provisions, but may be a violation of procedural provisions. In an ordinary situation, in the normal situation, it may be a mandatory requirement. But in exceptional circumstances, that should not be not be interpreted as substantial provision. That should be interpreted as procedural provisions. Further, the literal rule of interpretation is an outdated rule in many jurisdictions. Law must be interpreted such a way which is beneficial to the public. In responding the fourth one, suppose the parliament dissolve under the provisions of Article 70, Paragraph 5, Subparagraph B by operation of law. That means at the expiry of five years, at the expiry of five years, Parliament shall stand dissolved by operation of law. If you put these circumstances what we have seen up to now, can you argue that the dissolved parliament should be revived? Can't. The answer will be no because term of the parliament is for five years. Therefore, in this present context, Parliament cannot be revived in any circumstances. Parliament may be summoned in, in the circumstances provided in the Constitution. One of the circumstances is given in Article 70, Paragraph 7. The summoning the Parliament article under Article 70, Subparagraph uh, paragraph A is in absolute discretion of the president. Now we will see the subparagraph 7 here. There must be an emergency, first place. The, such emergency in a nature that will require the earlier meeting of the Parliament is necessary. That, that the thing is here, the emergency has a rising of such nature that an earlier meeting of the Parliament is necessary. Then not only the, there may be emergency, first thing, if there is an emergency, that's not an issue here. The emergency must be in a nature which require the earlier meeting of the parliament is necessary. Then, in addition to all these things, the president must satisfy. Then emergency is there, then it is such a nature which requires the meeting of the parliament. Then the third one is the the president must satisfy. Even though he is satisfied, he may not shall. He may call for summon the parliament. Then once the parliament summoned, such parliament shall stand dissolved upon the termination of emergency or the conclusion of general election. Whichever occurs first then if it is summoned, the parliament is summoned, then it will go up to the termination of emergency. Now the COVID-19, we don't know until which period it will go at the same time or otherwise conclusion of a general election. Then it may be even after one year. It may be even after six month time that we must consider here. Finally, the argument 5, that's a clear, clear approach in the law, 
where the president dissolves the parliament, dissolves the parliament before appropriation bill for the financial year has passed into law, he may authorize to issue from consolidated fund and the expenditure of such sums as he may consider necessary for the public service until expiry of the period of three months from the date on which new parliament is, is summoned to meet. Then it can go up to that period until expiry of three months from the date. Then the first the new parliament must meet. Then three months can go. After three months, the budget may be submitted in the parliament. This is a legal provision in relation to the dissolution as well as elections. Thank you for watching.